Have you ever been trapped in a lecture or a training session where you're fed a bunch of information and then at the end you're expected to write a multiple choice test? If you get a certain percentage of questions correct, you're now trained. You've now learned the material. But you know that in our heart of hearts, that's not true, that you're going to forget that material. You're not going to be able to use it effectively in the future. And the reason for that is because learning is an interactive process. And one of my favorite tools for building interactive learning experiences is an interactive whiteboard. I use the Nearhub S55 interactive whiteboard as well as some digital whiteboards and there's plenty of videos here on the channel where I show you some of those. But my one favorite tool is to actually use the Nearhub S55. I think that this whiteboard should be in every classroom and every training session because of some of the things that it allows us to do. In this video, I'm going to talk about five things. There's many more than five things that it can do, but I want to talk about five of my favorites. Probably the most, the easiest one or the one that you're most likely going to use if you're using a near hub or if you're using an interactive whiteboard is interaction. So the idea here is that I can use a whiteboard to present ideas, but it becomes even more effective when I can use that whiteboard to interact with others. Let me show you what I mean. If I go in and I draw something on here like hello world, so I can go in here and I can start using this, that is presentation of information. But now what I can do is I can go in and I can share this. And by sharing the whiteboard, I can invite collaborators to come in. This is fantastic, especially if I have a classroom or a training center where people have brought their own devices and maybe they're a little shy to come up to the front of the class or maybe that uh, I just don't have room at the front of the class and I want us all to work together to collaborate and to interact on the ideas we're discussing. They can come in, I can share it via a code, I can give them a code to connect to, I can go in and share it via a, a link, so I can grab a link, I can even share it with a QR code. So in the classroom, they can actually hold up their phone, hold up their device, and they're going to get this QR code and be able to join and interact with this whiteboard immediately. So this gives me a lot of different options where I can have people come in and they can either bring the whiteboard directly onto the device in front of them or remotely connect in through the internet. I can also choose what they can do. So for example, I could have it so they could just view it. So maybe this is something where I'm preparing to do some interactive activities and I don't want people writing on the whiteboard while I do the preparation or I can have it so they can edit. Great for brainstorming, great for that interaction that I'm looking for. So the first thing that I like the whiteboard for is interaction. Now related to interaction is I really like the whiteboard because I can build up ideas. So the second thing I like to do is to build up ideas. So let's go into the apps that I have here on the whiteboard and you can download apps from the Google Play Store. There are hundreds of apps. I have apps on anatomy, I have apps on art. Well, one app that we know that we have that everybody uses is a web browser. Notice that when I open the web browser, it splits the screen. I can actually split apps. So for example, if I go into my apps here, I could have near hub on one portion and I could have YouTube on the other portion. I could go into my apps and I could have near hub on one portion and internet explorer on the other portion. So you can split the screen. You can always move the screen so you can go full screen for the explorer here, but I'm going to go in and I am going to split the screen here where I'm going to have near hub on one side, Internet Explorer, not Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge on one side. I've gone in and I've looked up octopuses. So let's say for example, I'm doing a module, I'm doing some under the sea, we're going to talk about different things that live under the sea. And one of the, my favorite things that lives under the sea is an octopus. So I bring up this great image of an octopus. I can actually make annotations on that image. I can go in and I can say, you know, these are the tentacles and I can say they have neurons in them. I could say, here is the eye of the octopus and I could say in here is where the beak of the octopus is. So you can talk about this and then once you've done that, you can actually build on that idea by pulling that into the near hub uh, whiteboard. I can then say, okay, we're done for now. And I can say, let's put this in here and let's build up on this idea. Let's move this here. I can expand the size of this. Notice that my annotations remain in there. I could do things like say, now let's talk about octopus. Let's talk about some of the things you like about an octopus. This could be me drawing on here or based upon the interaction, if I've shared this out, 
Other people could be putting their favorite points about an octopus on there. They could put notes on here. They could put all sorts of shapes on here. They could put, and you can change the color of them. There's even some templates for strategy and planning. Not really appropriate to my under the sea, but you can see that there's a lot of things that you can do. You can also use this navigation bar down at the bottom as that whiteboard infinite canvas expands, I can really have a really good buildup of ideas. Then when I'm done this, I can actually share the results. This is often a big challenge that we have with students where, or any trainee that we might have, where I want to share the results so that they can take it and do some additional study. Well, if I go into sharing the results, I could go to this particular one here and I can just share it. And you can see I can share it. Again, you get the share code in there, but I can also go into it. And when I go into it, you'll see that I still retain it. I can go in and I can actually export it out as a PDF. So I can email this as a PDF, or I can even just say, hey, you know, we're finished for training for today. We're finished our experiential learning today. We're gonna go in here. I can do the entire whiteboard or just a specific page in here. So you can have multiple pages. I'll confirm that and now a QR code appears. Students can grab that QR code and take that entire experience with them for their further spaced repetition and study. So interaction, number one. I can have building up of ideas, number two. I can share those results, number three. The other thing that's really powerful here is that this can be remote or in person. I think this is going to become even more important. Obviously, remote training was an important element when we were all sort of locked in our basements for a little while there, but now that's become an expectation. People now want to be able to receive training when they want the training, and it could be remote where it's one office to another office or a training facility to the field or it could be something where a student isn't feeling well and they still get, have the opportunity to participate because they're feeling well enough to participate, but they're not feeling well enough to be interacting with others. So that remote and in-person and hybrid solution is something that we can do as well. The other thing that's really powerful here is of course, you saw that I had YouTube here, so I could bring YouTube in there. So I could have YouTube here. I could go into that great channel, Learning and Technology with Frank. So maybe I want to go in there. Maybe I want to grab this video on achieving digital transformation. Maybe I want to have the multimedia play. We can have a conversation about it while it's playing. Maybe I'm at some point in here where I want to pause the video. So I'll just pause the video here. We'll go in and grab it and pause it. And then maybe I want to make an annotation on here. And I want to say, you know, here's the annotation. This section here is what we're going to study this week and then again, push it over to the whiteboard that I'm working on. Obviously, it's kind of strange to have this with the octopuses, but you can see that that multimedia experience where I can go in and I can grab elements of the multimedia world, bring them in, play them on the screen. Now, in this case here, it does have a built-in camera and a sound bar on here. So you can also use it for remote meetings. There's many things you can do with this interactive board. I'm going to be talking about a lot of them in some subsequent videos. But for now, the five things that I think are fantastic that can really transform your learning and teaching is the ability to interact with the learning. You can also have people come up, by the way, and have up to 20 touch points so you can all interact directly or through that sharing. You can build up ideas. You can share the results. You can keep those results, share those results, allow people to download them and work with them. You can have the remote or in-person options and you have the ability to use multimedia because of the camera, the sound bar, and the fact that you're connected to the internet so you can pull experiences, you can pull resources into the classroom. Stay tuned for more videos on the NearHub S55 and how we can use an interactive whiteboard such as the NearHub in order to teach more effectively. And stay tuned for other videos on how we can use technology to learn and teach more effectively. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.